Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the photo department, quarantine style. I don't know what that was, that was weird. This channel just rocketed past 6,000 subscribers this week and I've been sitting at around 5K-ish for about a year now and it's really cool to see that people are finding this channel and enjoying it. So thank you guys for subscribing and supporting this channel. It brings me tons of joy that the work that I put into it is being enjoyed by all of you people. And uh, you keep me going. I love you for it, thank you. Here's to another 6K, let's go, 12K by next week, right? No? Okay, that's not possible. I get comments and DMs and tweets and emails constantly about all sorts of stuff, but the one thing I get messages about the most is what camera gear I'm using to shoot my YouTube videos and why I chose to use that camera gear. I've been putting off making a video about this for a little while because honestly, it's not that exciting to me and I rotate through gear pretty frequently. So I thought this would be a good time to actually break down what I use to make YouTube videos for you guys so you can see what I'm using and kind of explain why I decided to use these specific things. But I thought it might be a great idea to bring some friends along who have a lot more experience shooting YouTube videos than I do and whose choices in gear are probably a little more interesting and maybe rooted in a little bit more wisdom than me. I'm very excited because my friends Matt Day and Christine agreed to let us have a peek behind the curtain and see what they're using for making YouTube videos. Christine is a lifestyle and beauty YouTuber who has been doing this for a very long time, I think close to a decade, and she has a ton of subscribers and is well-loved across the YouTube community for her fresh and personalized approach to her subjects. She has a very wide range of things going on on her channel uh, from beauty tips and uh, makeup to lifestyle and apartment tours and she even is a really gifted photographer and brings other creatives uh, Also photographers like myself onto her channel to talk about their craft or discuss nerdy things. I've been on her channel tw Three times now twice three times. So she's a great friend. She's actually the reason why I started on YouTube in the first place So without further ado, let's go to Christine and she can tell us about her YouTube filming gear. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. I'm here because Chris asked me to talk about my favorite equipment to use while I'm recording my YouTube videos. I just want to talk about a few things that I love. First off, my camera. I'm shooting with the Canon 6D Mark II. The reason why I got this camera is because it has a flip out screen. If I were to purchase this again, I probably wouldn't because I don't rely on this flip out screen so much because I actually use this monitor. Um, this is so efficient because I can shoot with any lens and as long, as long as this monitor is right up close, then I can make sure that everything's in focus. So the reason why I got this monitor is honestly because I just needed a monitor to be up close to me and I went on YouTube and looked up monitors under 250 because I don't really know that much about monitors so I felt like anything would be better than the screen that I have on my camera, right? As you can see, it's much bigger. Yeah, so it's just more efficient to use and if you have a suggestion for a better monitor, let me know. But I'll link the one that I have in the description box. These tripods right here, these are from Manphoto. Is it Manfrotto? Yeah, Manfrotto. They're great, they're great for everything. Um, I use them for monitors, to hold up mics, to hold up my cameras. I mean, they're great for everything. Lights even, they're great. When it comes to recording, there are three important things to me. There's the lens, the audio, and then the um, lighting, right? So for the most part, I only use natural lighting, but from time to time, I'll use artificial lighting if I'm kind of, uh, if I'm short on time, then I'll use artificial lighting. So I have this. Again, I just looked up lighting and this takes up the least amount of space. So that's why I bought it. It's also from the brand newer. It just takes up not that much space. And before this, I was using light boxes, which I don't know, they were kind of a pain in the ass to pull out because it just took up, again, too much state, uh, space. Oh, so for audio, there are three things I like to do. I sometimes wear a lav, a lavalier attached to my 
phone and shoot with voice memos, which is the easiest way to do it. But for the most part, I use this. This is a Rode mic. Um, and I just attach it, or I feed it directly to my camera. And usually um, I'm shooting with a 40 millimeter lens, which is, where do I have it? It's this lens right here that's on my camera. So it's pretty close. So as long as I'm shooting with this lens, that's pretty close. And I'm shooting with this, or I'm feeding the audio through this, then um, you don't hear a lot of background noise. If the lens is further away, then I need a lavalier mic or something like that. But I recently got a, they call this the ASMR mic. This is a Blue Yeti. And I really like this because it makes everything sound so sensual. Like everything's so smooth and crispy. And I mean, people use these for ASMR. Um, if you're shooting a cooking video, you can hear everything. Oh, it's so nice. So yeah, I really like this. Um, if you were to start with one, I would say get the lavalier mic or just shoot voice memos on your phone. So, okay, so for the most part, cause I shoot mostly beauty videos on YouTube, I use this 40 millimeter, 1.128 STM. I don't know what that means, but I got this because my friend who's a photographer said to use this because it gets up really close to your skin and you can see everything. You can see pores, you can see fuzz, and it's just great for looking at makeup videos. But before I use this, I was using this right here. This is called the Nifty 50. It's super affordable. I feel like every photographer has this. I'm pretty sure this is kind of like a, it's not the kit lens, but m most photographers have this. And this is great because it gives you like a nice blurry background. The only thing about this is that the auto, the auto focus is kind of shoddy. So I have to manually focus with this camera or with this lens. Um, and then after that, I started using this right here, which is another 50 millimeter lens. This is actually vintage. It's from the seventies, I believe. It's from Canon. It's the FD 50 millimeter 1.8. And I really like this again, because I'm going to have to autofocus anyway. It's just so nice. It's really like cool, heavy, the lens is, the glass um, on this is really nice. It, I don't know, it, to me, it makes it feel more vintage, but I don't, know if, I don't know if it's true. So, I mean, I just reach for this because it looks so cool. Yeah, the reason why I like using this vintage lens is because, well, to be honest, it's because Chris was using a vintage lens and then he told me to get an adapter, so I bought an adapter and then it changed everything because I think something about vintage glass something with about lead. It just makes it look more cinematic in a way. Um, it makes everything look a little bit more imperfect, but still, I don't know. Like it, it just makes it look almost like film, you know, to me. I don't know if it's true or maybe I'm just uh, psyching myself out, but th that's the reason why I shoot with this lens. And it's also mostly because anytime I shoot with a lens that's longer than 40 mill millimeters, I have to, uh, manually focus anyway, so just like how this looks. Um, and then aside from that, for for product photography, I use this 85 millimeter, um, shoot, 1.8. Um, and the reason why I got this is because I had, someone recommended it to me, some product photographer recommended it to me. And I don't really know that much about this lens, but I mean, it seems to be efficient. Not hella hyped on this though. And those are all, all the lenses. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much all the equipment that I use whenever I shoot. Uh, if I were to start all over again and I didn't have any equipment at all, since I've been doing this for like 10 years, I've collected so much equipment, right? Um, if I were to start all over again, I would just shoot on my phone. I would record audio off my phone. I'd get a, a cheap camera. I, I mean, I used the, uh, the webcam on my computer when I first started YouTube and that was efficient. So use the resources that you have and kind of work from there. The best camera, I mean, I heard this one, the best camera that you, that that is, or the best camera to you is the camera that you always have on you. Is that how it goes or something like that? As long as um, it's like something that you can reach for, then you're gonna use it, right? So just uh, work with the resources that you have and then add little things here and there as you go. Don't just, go and purchase everything that you see on the internet. 
I feel like, I mean, I might be wrong, but I feel like if you went and purchased everything that a YouTuber says, you're gonna end up with a lot of the same, the same um, types, of, types of videos. So to me, limited resources makes you more creative. So try using what you already have and then build from there. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Christine. That was incredibly insightful and hilarious. When I reached out to Matt Day to ask him if he had some time to do a little behind the scenes look at his YouTube gear, he was almost as excited as I was to lend his time to give us a little bit of a look at what he uses. I've been a big fan of Matt since I've been in photography or since I found his channel. Matt is a total sweetheart, super gracious, really generous with his time and his advice. Here is a look at Matt Day's gear and some advice from him. I love seeing other people's YouTube studios and setups and just how they do what they do. Uh, it's really fun to just study different lighting setups and audio setups and figure out how people do things and everyone kind of has their own approach to it. Uh, but I do get a lot of questions from people asking, you know, I, I want to start a YouTube channel. Where do I start? What's like a good starter kit for audio, lighting, camera, just tell me where to start. And the first thing I tell people is that if you have a smartphone, you can start right now. When I first started my YouTube channel about six years ago, I was using an old GoPro and a lavalier mic that I bought off of Amazon. I think it was an Audio-Technica lavalier mic, but it doesn't really matter. Any lavalier mic uh, you can get, basically. I just fed that directly into the GoPro and I just used the natural light coming into my office. And that was pretty much it. I edited everything on iMovie, but nowadays, considering how much better smartphones have gotten with their built-in cameras and microphones and even editing. You can have iMovie on an iPhone now, which is just insane. You have everything you need to get started. Over the years, I've evolved my setup a lot, and now I have a much different and much more elaborate setup, although I still keep things pretty simple. I have my Aperture 120D Mark II right here as my main light with an Aperture Lantern mounted to it. It's really, really close to me, so it stays nice and soft, but the Lantern kind of spills light in all different directions, and it kind of bounces off of the white walls here and just fills the room really nicely. Attached to the rolling stand that it's on, I have this clamp right here with a little tiny arm with my Rode VideoMic NTG mounted to it just out of frame. So my lighting and my audio are all on the same stand, so I'm not using multiple stands taking up a bunch of space. And to further simplify things, I have that mic fed directly into the camera so I don't have to sync in post. I have these two little lamps here from Ikea just to add some warm light to the scene. And then behind me, I have a tiny little Aperture MC that is literally just sitting on top of this toolbox here pointed at the wall just to throw some blue light on the wall and kind of mix in with the warmer tungsten light on the sides. And that's my whole lighting and audio setup. I'm filming this right now with a Canon EOS R and a 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. The camera itself is on an iFootage Komodo K7 head on some Gazelle TC6 legs. And it's fun to nerd out on all of this gear and try different things out. I've been in this office space for about six months now, and it's already been changed multiple times because I'm always looking for different ways to change the lighting setup and even the camera angles. But all of this stuff just comes with time. And the main thing you should be focused on when you get started is just focusing on bringing your own perspective and something different to the table. You don't wanna just look at what everybody else is doing and mimic that because you're just gonna blend in. So if you have a smartphone and some good natural light, that will go a long way. Thank you, Matt. That was amazing and very simple, which is surprising, but also a very good point. Simplicity is often key. You don't need a bunch of extra stuff and accessories to make good videos. Let's talk about my rig. Like I said, I originally started filming YouTube videos with my Fuji X-Pro2 in 1080p with the Fuji film profiles, which looked really great, but I wanted something that had a little bit more of a video focus with more features for video. So I originally got a Fuji X-T2, which I really loved, and it was way more centered around video than the X-Pro2. Fuji F-Log, high-speed shooting for slow-mo, all that stuff built in, really great. But I decided I thought, because I was getting really into cinematography, I should buy a cinema camera like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which is an incredible camera for the price, but way overpowered for what I'm doing, which is documentary style and YouTube videos. I don't need a full cinema camera for that. So while I almost went that route, I decided to upgrade my X-T2 to the X-T3, which is filming this right now. I went with the X-T3 because the Fuji system is familiar to me. I know how everything works. The autofocus on X-T3 has been updated and is really, really good. And Fuji really did what they could to pack as much 
video centric stuff into this camera to make it really, really good for videographers. So while this is a hybrid camera, it is a really powerful video camera. Another good reason to use this camera is it is hybrid and you can use it for video and photos at the same time. Now the monitor I'm using is an Andy Cine 4K monitor that I got for I think around 150 bucks and it's pretty great. It's not the brightest, but it does work really, really well indoors. It has a bunch of built-in um, filmmaking features like false color, zoom, and it has power pass through so you can power the monitor and then also use an adapter to power your camera, which is pretty cool. The monitor sits on top of my small rig handle that's on top of my small rig cage for the X-T3. Uh, I use the small rig cage and system because I'm trying to build this gear setup out to be sort of like a documentary setup if I want to take it out and do some handheld documentary shooting. But it also works really great to add accessories for doing YouTube type stuff. So I have that set up, um, which is nice. Arguably the most important part of this rig are the lenses. I am firmly in the camp that lenses are what make the look of a film or a photograph. Now I do use native Fuji glass. I have the 18 to 55 zoom lens, which is kind of like their kit, uh, really sharp, super good lens that I use a lot actually, especially if I'm using autofocus. Um, that's a great lens. I also use the 35 millimeter F2, but the majority of the time I'm using this camera, especially for video, I'm using my vintage Nikon lenses for my F2 adapted to the camera. I have the 24 millimeter F2.8 and the 50 millimeter 1.4, which is what's recording right now. I love these lenses because they are both relatively fast. They have a great look about them. They look a very specific kind of filmic way. That I really like the way it imparts its own character on whatever I'm filming. So I use these lenses a lot. I used to adapt all these lenses to my camera just using a Photodiox or, or whatever brand dumb metal adapter that just attaches it with the correct flange distance um, so that the lenses can focus properly on a mirrorless camera. I bought the Zongi Turbo 2, which is a Nikon F2 FX focal reducer. And that actually gives me 55 millimeters of an angle of view, which is a lot closer to the normal angle of view of this lens. And it actually adds an extra stop at the wide end so um, at any given aperture, I'm actually a stop brighter than I would be without the focal reducer, which is pretty cool. It was only 150 bucks. And as I can tell from now, the build quality is pretty great. I'll do a review on this at some point in the future. Now I could just shoot this camera with just the monitor that's built in and nothing else attached. It would be fine, but that battery, that Fuji battery doesn't last a long time. So I wanted to find a solution to power the camera and the monitor at the same time. So I got, this really cool Movo V-mount battery plate that accepts V-mount batteries. Uh, it has a bunch of power outs on the back so you can run a, cam a cable to power your camera or power your monitor. And then on that V-mount plate, I have mounted a newer 95 watt hour V-mount battery, which I chose because it has a USB out on it, which I can then run a USB-C cable directly to my camera to power it. So right now that battery is powering both the camera and the monitor. With all this going the way it is right now, this should last about four or five hours, which is pretty impressive on a battery that's pretty compact. As far as audio, I wanted to go very simple. So I started out with the Movo shotgun mic that I have attached to the cage right now, just running straight into the camera. Uh, that gives me really good audio and pretty good noise reduction if I'm close enough. But if I'm outdoors, it's a lot better to use something like a lavalier mic, which I have right here. And this is a Movo lavalier. Both of these microphones were about 40 bucks each, I think on Amazon. You can run either of these mics directly into the camera or you can do what I do and use a cheaper sound recorder to run a microphone into. This is gonna give you better sound quality, more flexibility in post. This is the Zoom H1N. It's a really cheap recorder. I think they're less than a hundred bucks. I think I got this for like $89. It's definitely not the best. If I drop it, it's probably gonna break. It's not the most rugged, but it does have some very cool features. First of all, it has this uh, gain dial right here on the top, which is big and easy to see for your input gain, which is really good. And it also has built-in stereo microphones and you can use this as a standalone recorder without having to plug a microphone into it, which is neat. Uh, I've used this for a couple of years and it does a really great job. Um, there are definitely better recorders out there, but I don't need anything fancy. So this works out really good for me. Uh, it might work out great for you too. So lights are pretty damn important. You need good lighting in order to have good video. Like Christine, I try to shoot in natural light as much as possible. And so here I'm next to a big window. 
there's translucent curtains that are diffusing the light really nicely, so I've got nice soft light. And this is ideal for most of the stuff that I'm doing. However, if it's not bright enough outside or there's no sunlight, I use an LED panel and I have this Draycast LED panel. Um, it's bi-color, it's pretty freaking bright. Um, it's not the best LED panel that I've come across, but it certainly does work. But the key is you need good consistent light in order to have a uh, good video and good exposure. So like I said before, I'm really building this rig out more to be a documentary style rig so I can run and gun shoot with it. But since I'm at home and I'm usually doing YouTube stuff, I don't need all this extra stuff like the small rig cage, the monitor mount, all this other stuff that's helping me to make this a really good run and gun rig. Uh, it's not necessary to shoot YouTube video. In fact, none of this stuff is necessary. I can just put the camera on a tripod by itself and it would be perfect. So like Christine and Matt said, use the resources that you have, use your phone, use your computer, use whatever you can to record yourself. And that's gonna be the best way to get your content across. And then eventually if you start making some money or building a fan base or getting more into it, and this is something you really wanna do, uh, moving up to a purpose-built camera is a great way to do that as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Like I said, we passed 6K followers this week and that's a huge milestone. So thank you for the support, that's really awesome. If you wanna support this channel further, please go into the description and go to my Teespring page where you can buy merch. And the merch goes directly into helping me make these videos. I am still running my fundraiser with my prints to help fund research through the COVID-19 World Health Organization fundraiser. So if you wanna help in that cause to help fight COVID-19, please go to the link in my description and buy a print. You get a print for a lower price than usual. We get research money for fighting COVID-19 and we can leave this hellscape of quarantine sooner. So let's do it. Again, thank you, Christine and Matt Day for being awesome and helping me with this video. There's more videos to come soon. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you. You'll see me soon.